Hey everyone, Stuart here, hope you're well. One question I get asked a lot is how to record solo fingerstyle guitar, and it's a process that's different for all of us. Um, so in this video, I'm just gonna show you what I use, kind of explain why I use it. Um, there's no definite rules for this, and your setup could be completely different. If it works, it works, basically. When I started doing this um, over 15 years ago for a living, I had one Audio Technica microphone and a Yamaha hard disk recorder, and it, it sounded fine. Sounded pretty good. Um, you learn things along the way. I remember the first uh, the first professional piece of audio I sent off. I was really pleased with just a solo guitar thing for a publishing company, and um, the mix engineer sent some notes back and said, "Sounds pretty good, but you're going to have to get your tape machine cleaned. You got to clean the tape heads." And I looked at my digital recorder and thought, okay, we've got a problem here because there's no tape at all. And um, I realized that what he'd heard was uh, the sound of the birds outside my window. And he thought that was a problem with the tape machine. So, you know, I learned something that day and um, primarily about soundproofing. But what I'm gonna do here is just run you through the gear. Um, we're all obsessed with gear, any excuse to buy gear, try and, try and stop the gear flipping process and work with what you have, that's the best way to do it. So let's get started with the guitars to begin with. Okay, so obviously it all starts with the guitars, although hopefully it starts with my hands first, but without the guitars there's no music. So let's take a look at each instrument in turn. The first one is a Ryan Gerber RL15+, Plus, which is a beautiful, big, sounding, modern guitar made by Ryan Gerber, who's a great luthier from the States. And this is the instrument I'll reach for if I'm doing solo fingerstyle guitar, because it just sounds huge, it's fat and rich but it's perfectly balanced from the lows to the highs as well. One thing I always look for in a fingerstyle guitar is just a really big sound on the trebles because that's where the melodies sit and Ryan's guitars just have you know this really beautiful fat sound up there. So that's a great instrument for solo guitar but it also works really well for kind of modern strumming sounds as well if I'm working on that kind of recording. And then next we have this guy over here and this is a 1959 Martin 0018, which is a completely different instrument than the Gerber. Um, obviously it's vintage, so it has that dry, crisp sound, and this is great for anything which needs to be sort of period correct. So anytime I'm doing old fingerstyle blues or, you know, that kind of 60s singer-songwriter Paul Simon or James Taylor kind of thing, this works great. I've recorded quite a few solo production music albums on um, on this guitar and it just sounds great. They don't sound huge in the room but they record beautifully. And then finally over here is an Eastman E10 SSV which is basically kind of a Gibson J45 style instrument. Um, these are great. Again this has a different sound to the other two. It's amazing for strumming, but it also does that really dry, crisp fingerstyle thing beautifully. Again, old time blues, country singer, songwriter. So there's three in here. Um, and there's an old Gibson mandolin in the case over there as well. I'll probably add a few more at some point, but at the moment, these instruments are pretty much doing all the things I need them to do. So let's take a look at mics. Right, microphones. I've tried um, many different microphone combinations for solo fingerstyle guitar over the years, but at the moment I'm really liking these two. This is a Royer R122 on the left, which is an active ribbon mic, and um, this is a Gefell M300, which is a small diaphragm condenser, kind of like a Neumann 84 really. Gefell were the other half of the Neumann company, so it's um, kind of got that sound. But what I really like about this is the ribbon is really easy for placement, so that's kind of pointing towards the neck body join. That's kind of getting the bulk of the sound coming from the instrument, and then the gefell is generally pointing towards the bridge, just to get a little bit of um, high end in there as well. Uh, there's no phasing issues really with this setup, which is great, it's very quick. At some point I think I'll probably add um, a second Roy in place of the gefell, just to try that as well, just so it's a, a more of a matched pair kind of thing. But this is really easy, um, very fast to use, and pretty true sound of the instrument as well. Probably not the sound I'd use for everything if I was recording on a singer-songwriter track. This is probably going to be a little bit too big, a little bit too fat sounding, but 
For solo guitar, it's great. Um, well worth trying out any kind of ribbon with a condenser because you just get that really beautiful range of sounds. And then from there, these two go into the rack here. Um, the Gefell goes into this Buzz Audio Elixir preamp, which is great. It's just really nice and clean. That's going into uh, a Neve 551EQ. Um, I always track with these. It's not doing a great deal, actually. It's Part of it is to add the sound of the Neve in there as well, but um, EQ-wise, I'm just taking off some of the 100 hertz down there on the um, on the right-hand side. That just cleans up the sound on the way in, gets rid of that kind of muddy boominess that a lot of acoustic guitars have. The Royer generally goes into uh, a Chandler TG500, um, which is brilliant. I'll get another one of these at some point, maybe try replacing the buzz with the Chandler, but they both sound great. That one's probably got a bit of a richer sound, um, different transformers in there, so a bit of a contrast in sound, a bit, bit more lively maybe, a bit more colour. That again goes into another Neve 551, which is doing the same thing. Um, there's a high pass filter on these two as well at 80 hertz, and then again you can see 100 hertz um, taken off the bottom, which really helps more with the ribbon mic because they inherently have that kind of warmth and boom down there. So again, just cleaning up the sound on both mics, so when they're recorded, I don't have to do a great deal to them. Mixing wise, I'll do another video on mixing at some point, but um, what I absolutely love is this Better Maker EQ502, which is a Pultec style EQ. Um, and I put that on the stereo bus, which just adds a little bit of top end. Um, you can take a bit of top end out at the same time with the Pultec. Same with the low end, add a bit more in, take a bit more out. But this is an incredible unit and it makes everything just sound finished. It makes it sound like a record. So that's a fairly simple setup on the um, on the recording and mixing side of things, we're going into a, a Neve, um, I think it's called an R6 power supply, which is really reliable. I love that thing as well. Okay, let's take a look at monitoring next. Monitoring is um, a huge aspect of it all, and you know you really can't scrimp on the monitoring side of things. It's one of those purchases that's normally quite painful because speakers aren't the most exciting things, <laughs> but when you get them right and when you, when you get them in place. It makes the workflow so much easier and the job so much more pleasant as well. So I've recently changed to a pair of Unity Audio uh, Mini Rocks, which are amazing, just really nice and flat. I'm not monitoring at high volumes here and I'm doing a lot of acoustic music, so I'm not really massively concerned about large drivers. These are just under six inch drivers and they, they sound great. You know, they just really represent the sound as it is. Um, any tweaks that I make on the EQ, EQ or compression side of things are really obvious on these. Um, interface is an Antelope Audio Centaur. These things are really cool, um, sort of designed for guitar players, but I don't use a lot of the uh, effects in there because I have the Kemper for electric guitar recording in the bag over there. And then headphone wise, for tracking, a pair of Focal Spirit Pros, which are great close back headphones, very flat again. And um, for mixing both solo guitar and other projects, I absolutely love these. Bayer Dynamic DT990 Pro, uh, 1990 Pro, sorry, uh, open back headphones. These are amazing. The, the bass response from these is incredible. It's on a par with monitors, frankly. Absolutely amazing headphones. If you, um, if you find that monitors aren't working in your room or you don't want to spend too much on monitors, I would really recommend a pair of these because you can work with them. They're absolutely incredible. It's almost like strapping a good pair of monitors to your head, basically. So those are the DT1990 Pros. And everything's going into an iMac. Um, I can't remember the spec. Sorry, works. <laughs> Does a pretty good job. And, and it's running Logic Pro 10, which is fine. And uh, yeah, I think that's about it. A large part of what you do is going to depend on your room as well. You might have high-end gear um, and just be getting a terrible sound, too many room acoustics, too much noise from outside. So do think about treatment and stuff like that. I've just moved house, so the room I'm in is a work in progress, as you can see. There's no bass traps here or anything like that yet. But it actually sounds pretty good. There are bookcases which 
help with reflections and stuff like that. But um, as with monitoring, you know, if you're going to record a lot of solo fingerstyle guitar, your environment has to be right and you will have to spend some money on treatment, which is even more painful than monitors. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Recording solo fingerstyle guitar is such a fun art. It's an amazing thing to do. If you haven't done it before, just start. Start with your iPhone, buy a cheap mic, just trial and error will get you there. But the more you do it, the more you're going to learn how it works and the more you're going to get into it. Um, I'm very sorry if this video has given you a shopping list and if you then get into trouble with your partners, please don't blame me. It's, um, you know, it's just something we all do. I would say don't go chasing too much gear initially because you want to use your ears and you want to learn how things like EQ and compression work before you start relying too much on the gear. I'm going to be make, making more of these videos as I go along. There are more tutorials on the way. Um, if you're studying things dog guitar, don't forget, you can now join me online each month at www.fingerstylefocus.com where I'll be teaching you my pieces, exercises and arrangements from my books and the techniques that I've been using for the past 30 years. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again next time.